Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today's April 13th, 2018, and this is our episode number 290. We come back to Grandeni after, what, three episodes? Yep. Uh, and we found a company that's shown solid results over many, many years. And... Uh, uh, an investment decision here really is about two factors. Uh, one that's relatively simple is price relative to all, all the numbers. And the other that's way more complicated and at the end of the day is the ultimate uh, decision factor anyway, is the qualitative thing. So understanding the dynamics there, under, uh, understanding the management team better. And it's kind of hard to, or, or I, I perhaps uh, I myself haven't gotten very deep into making videos about those things. Uh, but it, I, I feel the difficulty here is, is how to go about that process. Because it's a process of reading a lot, of watching interviews, of understanding culturally the products, understanding the, the whole picture and that's way more complicated than looking at the numbers but all in all for Grandeni uh, you know we have brands that are leading brands we have something that we are sure people in general right 10 years from now 30 years from now hey 10,000 years from now people will wear shoes so it's one of those sectors where you're just very sure. We don't know if we're going to be using cell phones. Even 10 years from now, they may have become, you know, brain implants or whatever you, you want. So it's harder to say if Apple is going to own that. Now, when you know, you know, the, the form factor of shoes will, won't be very much changed. Uh, it's easier to trust that Grandeni will be a factor, you know. Uh, of course, it may be overcome by competitors, but it's a game of probabilities. So, uh, one thing I wanted to do here, I want to do, is take a look at the dividends paid. Uh, and we can talk about the importance of dividends. So, you can uh, do very, very well uh, buying companies that don't pay dividends. And you can do very well with companies that do pay dividends. So I'm not uh, fundamentalist about that. What you may want to know is like, who can use excessive cash flows better? The management or you? Do you trust, uh, sometimes you trust the company in terms of generating profits, but the use of those profits you may not trust. So it's capital allocation. This is less rare than it seems. So you have executive, uh, executives that operate well, but then they, they expand, they purchase, and they diversify, as they say. So that plays against everything they do day to day. So if a company pays good dividends and is not trying to, to overreach, you know, and then you're not trying to become you know, a rocket company or whatever, that's okay, and then you choose what to do with that money. Now, if you have a, a master capital allocator in your in your investee company, so if you're a partner of, uh, say, Berkshire Hathaway uh, or a, a handful of others, you don't want that dividend. You say, look, you're better than me, use that, and I'll surf on your wave there. Anyway... What we want to do here is uh, investment, uh, as dividends. So, for 2017, we add these, these two numbers here. Dividendos pagos and juros. It's funny because, uh, as you see here, if they bought back their shares, this is interesting too. So that's something we should take a look at also. Uh, because it, it, if you don't sell back, your slice of the pie represents a, a larger slice. So, 
But right now we're just focusing on the dividends themselves. So 217 plus 160. So they've paid 300 they paid 377 in 2017. Twenty sixteen they paid it's right here eleven plus hundred and eighty four, a hundred and ninety five. And in twenty fifteen, so this column fourteen plus two hundred and sixty, two hundred and seventy four. So now we can go to the year. 2014 free cash flow about page 24 perhaps yes so here you go the same column I'm going to scroll Here, so they don't have here. They don't show uh, juros sobre capital próprio uh, specifically, so I won't count that. So it's just the dividend here. I may be wrong here. Uh, if you know better, please let me know. Two hundred thirty-six, and then two ninety-five, and then two seventy-five. So now we go to 2011. So dividends, first column here, 183. Then 105, then 120. Let me fix this. These years here, some, some bug happened. And so now all we need is 2008 to have 10 years. That's all we're going to look at. 10 years, that's fine. Okay, let's see if they have for in the 2010 DFP if they have the number for 2008. Yep, 2008. So dividends paid 113. Great. We'll take the average here. 10 years, 5 years. That's great, but it doesn't say a whole lot because it's not inflation adjusted. So we use some macros here for adjusting for inflation and this is it so the dividend yield on average will be a division so it's the market cap divided by the dividend inflation adjusted uh, no, sorry, it's the opposite. The yield is the dividend paid divided by the market cap. So it's 3.35 on average versus the current price. Over the last five years, it will be these dividends. So 3.80. Now, maybe we can... Uh, update our market cap here hmm. 
eight two one three. Didn't change much. So the average dividend here per se loses to inflation. So it's not a great dividend. If you find things above 6% after inflation, uh, I mean adjusted for inflation, that starts to look great. So no big deal here, N nothing for us to become uh, overexcited in terms of the dividends here. So I'm going to to come to a kind of conclusion here. So as you know, uh, I talk about, uh, as you may know, I talk about the stocks I invest in, and I, I have an imaginary uh, list of stocks that I would invest in had I a more diversified list, which I don't. Right now I hold five, five companies. So let me draw something here. Um, naive. Alrighty. So this is my personal list of of companies that I either recommend or have in this imaginary circle. So if you see here, I said uh, <clears throat> for for Firbaza, and this will be our next company. So we're, we'll do a one year later. I said I would, I would uh, in a portfolio of 20 companies, I would put it in, all right? So, uh, Grindene, uh, in a portfolio of 20 companies, I'd have it, right? So, it's our current date, uh, the current market cap. I, I had some, just some easier data points here just to facilitate matters. Uh, <clears throat> the price of the share itself, so 27.31. Yeah, and this is it. So I I wouldn't buy Grindene, okay? I work with a very concentrated portfolio. But for the very long term, uh, if, if I had 20, just as a more defensive uh, portfolio, I would, I would buy Grindene at the current level. Okay, so no debt. A P of 13 over the last five years, which were rough, by the way. Free cash flow of 22. A, an average dividend yield over 10 years of 3.3. I would buy Grandini just because it's a solid company. So I would buy and hold. So one year from now, if I continue to do the, these videos, we'll come back to Grandini and see where Grandini went. And in our next episode, we'll, we'll do the very first review of investments, investment ideas with Ferbaza, which was our first company that somehow I considered. So, see you in that episode. Before, we, before I go, I invite you to... Well, if, you, if you're here still, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, please uh, think about uh, watching our past episodes. We do have 289 more. And if you have questions, suggestions, criticism, and especially if you've spotted mistakes in the analysis, uh, please leave a comment here, and I'll write you back as soon as I can. 
Have a great day. Bye-bye.